Thank you for joining me. Let's get started with Chapter 10 of Chains and the Giant Peach. Enjoy! Chapter 10 It was quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders inside. He crawled in. He kept on crawling. This isn't just a hole, he thought excitedly. It's a tunnel. The tunnel was damp and murky, and all around him there was a curious bittersweet smell of fresh peach. The floor was soggy under his knees. The walls were wet and sticky, and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now, as though the tunnel were leading straight towards the very center of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds, he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was sweet and juicy and marvelously refreshing. He crawled on for several more yards and then suddenly, bang! The top of his head bumped into something extremely hard, blocking his way. He glanced up. In front of him, there was a solid wall that seemed at first as though it were made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except that it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Then he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone. He gave it a push. It swung open. He crawled through it, and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, Look who's here! And another one said, We've been waiting for you. James stopped and stared at the speakers, his face white with horror. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only solid brown wall behind him. Well, James is certainly into some interesting situations now. The author is using suspense here in order to build up a feeling of anticipation for what might be revealed in the next chapter. Do you have an idea of who might have been talking to James? Did you notice how James reacted to the speakers, even though we as readers didn't get to see them yet? we could see how James was responding and that he was very afraid of who was talking to him. Pay close attention and see what happens in the next chapter and see if appearances are the same as what's really there. I hope you enjoyed listening to chapter 10 and I look forward to you listening for chapter 11 as well. Thank you very much for listening and take care.